Hi guys, it's Cami. I hope you enjoyed watching the ceremony. I'm now just going to show you some still pictures. These aren't the professional photographs from Louisa, our photographer, but it's stuff the other guests captured. We just took some shots outside the church after the ceremony. We had everyone for basically the whole day because our ceremony was at one o'clock. So we could plan some fun activities with everyone. So we just mingled and, and took it easy and just sort of tried to stay in the moment, Martin and I. And then we walked through the castle. It was a short walk from the church uh, to the harbor where we were gonna take a boat cruise. But first we had to pass the castle and they were doing a changing of the guards, which was completely serendipitous timing and we acted like we planned it, but of course we hadn't. So we took a photograph right in front of the castle where the queen lives. And this is a shot with some of our friends from work. Martin and I worked together. We've worked together for five years. We were very good friends before we became a couple. So we went to the harbor, short walk from the church, and then had some ice cream. We had an ice cream truck there, um, just giving guests some ice cream and some champagne. And there were a lot of kids as well, so they had juice boxes. And then we loaded the boat and took a harbor cruise. There's my mom waving goodbye. Um, and then actually my cup of ice cream flew out of my hand. I think I was waving or something. You can see it right there. It was really funny, but it didn't make a mess. It wasn't a big deal. So we just sort of spent the day, or spent an hour on the boat, mingling, talking to people, going inside and out. It was just beautiful weather outside, so we got really lucky with that. And there were a lot of children, a lot of our friends have babies and young kids, so they were able to join us for the whole thing, for the ceremony and for the afternoon. They didn't stay for the dinner, but it was really important because I love children and babies, and it was fun to have kids there because that's really what's most important in life. So. It was a wonderful cruise and then we all got on a bus and went to one of my favorite parks in Denmark called Fredericksburg Haven, Fredericksburg Gardens and that's what it looks like. We had rented a greenhouse in there and it was such a beautiful location. We had a whole park to ourselves basically. It was nestled in this little corner. So guests could play you know, lawn games during the day and we took some photographs. And it was just fun, it was very mellow. It was just the afternoon spent at the park after the cruise. So these wreaths were made by my mother and father-in-law. I thought they were really beautiful. And there we are entering. We took a few pictures by ourselves in the city before catching up with everyone. And then at five o'clock, we actually did the cutting of the cake. They do it a bit early in Denmark, which I think is nice because we were gonna have dessert anyways after the dinner. So by then, by five o'clock, people were ready for a little snack. So we had this delicious cake made by a woman in Denmark. It was, she just does it out of her house and I was quite pleased with it. It tasted really good. There's a lot of kissing in these shots. <laughs> Sorry about that. But for some reason, we couldn't keep our hands off each other. So we took a group photo around 5.30 that day, and then it started to rain. So we had to quickly rush inside the greenhouse. But it wasn't too bad. It only rained for about 10 minutes. And then the dinner started at 6 o'clock. My little sister, Allison, made all of those name cards. I thought they were so beautiful. She has really good calligraphy handwriting. And then we just took some pictures as well before the dinner. My mom made every one of those pennants by hand. I helped her, but she was the big sewer in the family. So she did an amazing job. I thought it added to a lot of the decor in the, in the greenhouse. You can see some lipstick on Martin because there's this fun Danish tradition where when the bride goes to the bathroom or leaves the room, all the women line up and kiss the groom on the cheek. So there's a lineup of my friends giving him a little kiss. And then the same thing happens when he leaves to go to the bathroom, all the men line up and give me a little kiss on the cheek. So it's a really fun Danish tradition. I'm not sure if they do that in other countries in Scandinavia, but it's hilarious. And then there's also quite a few toasts and speeches and the groom's speech is the first one and it's very important. And he did such a beautiful toast to me and it was really nice. And then other guests, my sisters made toasts as well. And Louisa, who is a dear friend who I've known since I was eight, she gave a very beautiful speech as well. And then whenever they clink the glasses, you have to stand up on your chair and, and kiss each other. So that was kind of scary, but really fun. So every time that happens, you have to kiss. I think we do that in the US as well. And that's my sisters, the bridesmaids. And then they also do a lot of sing singing at Danish weddings. And that's my Swedish friend, Johan, and his American wife. She's one of my first friends that I met here in Denmark. And they did a song. We sang All You Need Is Love, which was so fun. It was a little group sing-along, and everyone really enjoyed that. It was very touching. They made a little speech about love as well. 
and they translated it into Danish and English. Most of the wedding was in English, but we tried to mix it up at times as well. So after the dinner was over, we went out to this little pond and we lit these lotus flower lights and released them onto the pond. We made a wish and all of the guests had their own light and it was very beautiful. There was, I think, 60, 65 lit up candles out on the water and it just looked really nice. And that gave them time to put the tables away in the greenhouse and sort of prepare the dance floor because all of that was going to happen around 11.30 or midnight. The Danish weddings are very long, so it was a very long dinner. And then we returned to the greenhouse for dancing, and the whole goal is to make it before midnight um, to do the first dance. And the first dance is the wedding waltz. They've been doing this for centuries, hundreds of years in Denmark. We actually took a dancing lesson to really nail it, but there's the traditional Danish wedding waltz song, and all of the guests sort of enclose you and embrace you, so you only dance for a couple minutes before they're all circling you and you can no longer dance. And then at that point, they take the groom and they take his shoe off and they cut his socks. And it's just this old tradition. Apparently, hundreds of years ago, they did it so that the groom could never run away um, because it would be too cold because Denmark's cold. So it's a funny tradition, but it happens at every Danish wedding. There is my father and I were doing the father-daughter dance, and that was to the carpenters. He went to college with the carpenters, and he just adores them. So we did Yesterday Once More, which is a good song by them. And then there was a candy table set up, and that was just for guests to munch on some food. And then at 2.30 in the morning, yes, it's a very late wedding, 2.30, 3 a.m., we had night food. So there was a night meal, and that was just hot dogs. But by then, guests are getting hungry again, so we had that. And then we just kept dancing, and everyone seemed to have a pretty good time until the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> 